Smith. Hell, uh, here. Harden. Here. Got all of it. Here. Here. Okay, so Harden's not here. No, he, he is, is here. here. He's right here. He's right there. Oh. Okay, we have everybody. Yep. All, all right. All present. All right. Do we uh, thank you for the minutes yes, for sir. April 29th? Is there a motion to dispense with those reading of those and approve them as so moved? Yes. Second. Second. Okay, who made the motion? John. John did. Okay, Mr. Harden. Smith seconded that. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed by the same sign? That's five to zero passes. A 2006-23 request for consideration of city manager. Uh, the mayor is here and uh, I, we don't have anything new tonight. Uh, we're just continuing to work on the petition. So uh, if we can finalize that project, I know everybody's working really hard to get the signatures. We're making great headway with that. Um, but uh, we're going to carry this over uh, pending the continued work on the uh, signatures. Just a reminder that Alex is speaking to this at the chamber less than next week. Okay, great. Great. Uh, thank you for that. We'll carry it over without objection. Uh, new business, we have four items tonight. Uh, and I've sent everything out to everybody. Hopefully you got that. Uh, 010524 request to authorize the mayor to sign an easement agreement with Alabama Power to permit service to a ceasefire fiber hub previously approved by the city. Um, Where is Kale. And then is that the one this is the one on Lake, on, at the uh, soccer fields on Lakeshore. Um, so ceasefire was granted an easement to build a cabinet, right? They, they paid us. It is, but now they have to get power to it. Oh, oh, oh. And that's what this is. So yeah. the power will come in from um, further down south lakeshore, but kind of behind it. But they're not going to have to cut any asphalt or anything. Okay, so it's going to come down. We're coming off the soccer field park road, park easement off the road. Yeah. There's three or four giant pine trees where we originally were straight up. Between me and that field, we decided to change the route. So instead of being a little more of the soccer field for the easement, okay. you can say those trees, but it's off there. Okay. Because, you know, any questions? Yeah. And so this is literally I know that I know that work out on the trail, but cabinets are there, so this right. is just literally running the power to that. You know, the backside with the the, yeah. Line, yeah. Or the tree line, we're literally gonna cut most right. of it through the cover through there and then we'll stub up a two inch pipe pole in and out. I should have it done in a day. Okay. Clean up there. Zero five twenty four request to surplus file cabinets, various furniture, other items from the finance department offices, as well as eight file cabinets from inspections. And uh, I've sent out information about this. Uh, it's all right. Any questions on that? What happens if someone doesn't take them? Um, I'd make a motion to approve um, surplusing the items as listed. Second. Okay, moved by Councilor Smith, second by Councilor Gwaltney. This will be an ordinance for next week. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Five to zero, that passes. Zero three zero five twenty four. request for consideration of hiring four new police officers as SROs. Uh, the chief is here. And um, I'll give you the background that I know and that he can kind of provide. Uh, this is something he's been working on with the Board of Education uh, for, uh, for four additional police officer positions so they can serve as SROs within the school. So you want to add some Yes, sir. Color? Thank you. So the way we currently, or actually the last several years, the way we've operated, we've used a mixture of full-time police officers to staff uh, the positions of SRO throughout the school system and 
retired police officers that we've made reserve officers with the city and they're paid under contract by the Board of Education. Uh, myself and Dr. Hefner have had numerous meetings about this issue even since he took over several years ago and his um, goal, uh, which became my goal as well, was to get to a position in the future where we had all of the officers serving as SROs were full-time police officers for the city. No contracted uh, retired officers. Um, so we tried to put this in the budget last year. I don't believe that the board approved it last year for him, so we did not go forward with the new positions that I put in the budget. I took them out. Um, during the school year this year, we lost uh, two of our contracted um, SROs, which unfortunately does happen. It's a high turnover rate when we contract or when they contract with these officers. Um, they don't stay very long in most cases. Uh, we, we lost two during the school year, uh, which kind of precipitated the conversations again between Dr. Hefner and I to do it a different way of staffing. Um, so he has gotten approval by his board and I, I wanted to bring it to the Finance Committee to uh, request that we create four new police officer positions so that when I staff officers or assign officers to the schools um, next school year, which you know will be upon us very soon, um, I can replace those personnel with new, uh, new police officers that can take their place out on the street and patrol. Um, we have a long-standing contract with the Board of Education, the Police Department, and um, the Board. They reimburse the city 80% of the total benefits package for these officers. And they also pick up some of their training costs. They're required, as you would imagine, to get certification to, to work in that capacity and continuing education um, during the summer when they're, when they're not in school. And the Board um, picks up a lot of those costs as well. Um, so that's what we're requesting, uh, four new police officer positions um, so that I can hire some officers with, with the plan of four of my guys or girls leaving and, and going to the schools come you know, mid-August, first part of August, and I can replace them with some newly hired officers, which I hope I can hire between now and then. So just to clarify, the, the item says to hire four new officers as SROs, but your plan is to hire four officers who will probably be patrol officers in place of the four right. who are probably going to yeah. move up to SRO. We won't. We won't hire a, a new police officer and stick them in a special assignment immediately like sure. that. We will. We will um, use, use some of our experienced officers to fill those positions, and then they will be replaced by these new um, officers sure. that we get approved for, hopefully, and, and are able to hire between now and August. So these will be four permanent positions that are labeled SROs. That those will be in place. No, I think he's going to be hiring. He's not going to be hiring four SROs. No, he's going to be hiring that, four officers. Will he hold four SRO positions within the wherever in the police force, so that we don't? I mean, what I want to make sure is that if these are positions that are going to be budgeted for, that they stay there, right? And then they don't get moved around later, right? And then we have to cut, we have to issue SRO contract cops again, right? Does it, do you see what I'm saying? That not 100. Right now we're working with contract officers. Right. 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 He's going to hire four police officers. He's going to sign four other ones to be SROs. Right. What I want to make sure that we're allowing this in the budget that there's us, these positions are exclusively for SRO we're officers. These four positions. That part yeah, it, and, it, and it has to be handled that way because yeah. we, we're going to have the reimbursement calculation. Right. Yes. So mm -hmm. they're going to reimburse 80%, and we pay. 20%, so it, they're going to have to be labeled for SRO. So, I mean, in the budget, it should. So, he can move people in and out SRO. of those different positions. Yeah, because it might not be the same but person. There will be four correct. positions in the budget that say SRO. Chief Ross, do you know how much that's going to be per officer, about for us per year? Um, I think I had some calculations that I was talking to Walter about where it was going to be about $250,000 total. If we were able to hire officers today to get us through the rest of the budget year, it would cost us about $250,000 this budget year. Now, 80% of that would be picked up by the board with reimbursement. Um, but that's according to my calculations. Yeah. 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 As Chief mentioned, we, we wanted to do this, honestly, like two years ago. We actually started the conversation with Dr. Hefner in regards to you know, getting full-time officers in these SRO positions. They weren't ready to do it then. Last year, the board didn't approve it. Um, but now that we've come to the point, as Chief mentioned, where, you know, they've lost a couple 
and they've got another one. Don't you have another one, Chief, that's about to yes, either retire uh, or leave? Yeah, another one of them has some health problems that is, you know, of concern to us. Um, you know, we started this school year off with seven. We had two at the high school, two at the middle school, and one each at the elementary schools. And we're finishing the year out with five, Kenny, is that right? Uh, Kenny Blackman back there is one of our uh, full-time police officers that's been assigned as an SRO for a, a few years now. Um, you know, and this is this is kind of a recurring problem. Every school year, we, we seemingly lose one of our contracted um, uh, reserve police officers. So, uh, I mean, like I, the mayor I said, we, you know, I have a yeah. child and children in both the elementary and the middle school. So I'm very supportive. At the same time, we're at the end of the school year. This is outside of the budget, so I just want to make sure, like, do they have to all be hired at the same time? Is there a way to space them out and time them so that we are making sure that we're using our dollars as effectively as possible and still meeting the need of both the public schools and law enforcement to make sure that we're doing this in a responsible way? But this $250,000 is a lot of money. Even if it's 80% reimbursed, it's not reimbursed right off the front. Uh, we have to front that money. So I just want us to ask the questions yeah. that make sure that we do this in a responsible way and I did, I texted uh, Justin Hefner, and I'm sure he's probably out of the baseball field, um, but asking asking that question, I mean, it's clearly something that, you know, we want to make sure that our schools are safe and that we have all the people in there. Um, but it doesn't sound like to me, like you said, you're not going to go out and hire four officers tomorrow because um, no. you'll you, have to you pull see, lists from the personnel board. Yeah, the dilemma that exists is, you know, I would love to be able to just say, yeah, we're going to give you four new ones come August, whatever the first day of school is. But I have to, you know, I'm responsible for having enough patrol officers to go out there and do what they do every day too. So I can't pull from one division and send officers to another division without making a plan in advance to replace them. I can't replace them after the fact, you know, because it takes a long time to recruit somebody, get them through the hiring process, and then train them in order for them to go out and do any kind of job for us. So ideally, we would have hired these officers already, and they would be in the process of training so that come August, I could send four other officers to fill these positions. Uh, but but Justin and I just, we started having these conversations again just a few weeks ago, so. Um, Do we know um, how that, what that reimbursement process looks like? That's a good question, because like you said, I mean, it takes a while. Is it, I mean, is it like a, they're gonna reimburse us at the end of the school year, or is it something where they do it? on a regular reoccurring basis. I, I just don't, I don't know how that process works. My, my understanding is it's just one check, but I don't know that, I'm not 100% sure on that. I would have to talk to somebody that, that handles um, um, that part of the budget. Yeah. But my understanding is they reimburse us with one check per year. Okay. Um, and we have a written contract between the police department and the school board that we renew every year uh, with these you know specific figures on them. Do SROs stay and do any kind of crossing guard responsibilities or? They uh, they have responsibility at school pickup and, and, and right at the in the morning off. and in the evening. Um, so yeah, they they have a they wear a lot of hats. Um, but we do have some some officers that serve as sort of traffic direction crossing guards at some of our major crosswalks. Like at the middle school, for instance, there's always somebody manning that crosswalk on Valley Avenue. Uh, the board pays for that officer. It's an extra job. But the um, the officers that are assigned as SROs, they have some duties too when, when it's, you know, in the morning and in the afternoon when the kids get out uh, with, with regard to, to traffic control or, you know, watching pedestrians cross at, at crosswalks and so forth. But there may be some other folks assigned to just short-term crossing guard work depending on what the board identifies. Or is that what you're saying? That I there always might be see a few others. I see around. an officer. There's always an officer at the middle school because I always see Dale. Officer Blackman at yeah. middle school. Um, but there's another officer in the afternoons. I know on Dale, like he's over there making sure all the kids get across Dale down to. Toward I guess, I guess Dawson. I'm just wondering if there are a group that aren't SROs that might help help Board of Education in various other ways. They, well, they, they, they do yes, already. They yeah, okay. they, they are. Yeah, okay. they do. Okay. And they're, um, like I said, they're paid by the board in a in different capacity. They're not SROs, they're just officers over there augmenting um, in the morning and in the afternoon for, for the, you know, 
foot traffic and vehicular traffic that, that needs controlling. Okay. Well, I'll say I, I spoke, I, I had to interview uh, Chief Shameware in Vestavia last week, and he was a longtime SRO at Presents mm -hmm. Middle School, and he said it is one of the most rewarding jobs that he ever had as a police officer. He absolutely loved it, and I think these people are so important, not just for the safety aspect, but they're such, they're, I mean, you know, yeah, Officer one, Blackman, the kids at the middle school. One sitting yeah, right there, I mean, him. he can tell you, how, yeah. I mean, and I can tell you too how important that assignment is. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we don't have any other resource that's more valuable in our city yeah. than our, than than our kids. Uh, and the people that work there too. Yeah. The faculty, the, the teachers, mm -hmm. staff, yeah. um, we're, we're there to protect everybody that's in that building, regardless of why they're there for. So it is, you know, we have done a really good job, I think, of, you know, we've responded unfortunately to the to the mass casualty events that that our country has suffered over the years we've responded and made our plans and staffing um you know in response to that um, there, there was a time when we had one sro that was going between three elementary schools <laughs> yeah so that. that's not ideal there was a time when there might have been one at the high school and one at the middle school and, and then if, if he was off sick or she was off sick then there would have been nobody there so we have um we put additional emphasis on the importance of that role that those officers fill for the department and for the community. And um, this is just another step in that in that direction uh, that we're trying to take, uh, myself and Dr. Hefner. Um, so. Quick question, why four, not five? I mean, we have three. And, and, I, and I thought we had seven at one time. So and we, what, what's we started with, why not five? Because some are still there. So we started with seven, and two of those seven were full-time police officers and still are. Officer Blackman and Officer Robbie Allen. Um, of course, they're still operating in that capacity. Five of the seven were contracted um, by the board. I made them reserve police officers. They've retired from numerous places across the, you know, metro area as police officers. I made them a reserve officer, which means we provide them with all of their equipment, all of their training, everything they need to to have everything at their disposal to be a police officer we provide them the police department does the board simply pays their salary and five we started with five we lost two during the school year for different reasons and we have another one that's uh, perhaps you know may not be back uh, and will not be back if we do what we're going to do tonight um, so that that's how we that's how we started with seven and we're down to five um, now, if we approve four new officers, four plus the two that we've already got over there, that leaves one of those seven will still be a contracted police officer. Um, okay, retired wait, officer. But, uh, hold on, I'm confused. I'm confused. <laughs> so, is the agreement with the board five. that they would they would reimburse eighty percent for what's the number of SROs that they would seven. reimburse? Seven. But okay. here, here's the situation. Of those five contracted retired police officers, we've lost two. We're about to lose another one. Dr. Hefkin would rather go ahead and <coughs> replace four of those five and and renew the contract with the with the fifth retired officer for another year. And then I'm probably going to be back this time next year asking you for another position. That's right. That that's his goal and my goal have them all. is to have all of them serving there as full-time police officers and That's have no contracted right. employees. But but for th for this coming year, one contract employee would stay. And is his contract specific, is directly with the school board? That's correct. Okay. He's a reserve police officer for me, for the right. police department. But they pay him. But they pay him. Um, that's the plan going forward. That's what Dr. Hefner and I would like to see, see happen this upcoming school year, which we start in August. Um, and at some point in the future, we would get to a position where we wouldn't even have that one officer remaining as contracted. He would be replaced as well with a full-time police officer, and we would have a have to create yet another police officer position. Do you know how the lists look right now for officers? For hiring, is there somebody? I mean, is there a good list out uh, there? You know, we we're always in the recruitment phase. Um, we're always pulling lists because, um, as we discussed, we've we've been sitting on uh, a vacancy during the during the budget year that's been frozen. We've sat on some vacancies in the jail and in the radio room and in some other areas of the police department. So we're always pulling lists, always recruiting. I just interviewed a, uh, an officer last week that I feel like 
I can hire. Mm -hmm. He's APO certified. He could go to work immediately. Those those kinds of, of candidates are ideal for us in, in the situation that we're in right now. Um, so yes, uh, I, it's very possible that if we approve these four new officers that between now and August, I, I believe I can get some officers in place and we'll be in a position, a good position to send. We're gonna send them over regardless. <coughs> right. We gotta protect the schools, but we'll be in a better position to be able to absorb that loss with regard to staffing the, the beats in the city. But we, we just have city. to think about the downstream effects. I mean, we're, we're all, I mean, ultimately we're putting in four new positions in the budget for next year, which we took, originally took out the request. So we're basically going back on what we said at the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, I mean, that this is gonna be an, an ongoing That's right. cost. So that's part of our discussion tonight is, is are we committed to doing this? It's going to take, from a logistical standpoint, Mike, it's going to take uh, a resolution for the personnel board to create four new positions. Right. And then it's going to require funding, so 250000 this fiscal year. But I need to know, like, you have to come to budget hearings and what is that going to be for next year so it's it's a it's a big expense chief i mean i wonder like you know i know you're requesting for it i'm asking i'm supporting it because we care about the safety of our children and kids in school is there any ways to say i need three i need three or or you know is there is there any flexibility or even in the staggering of those hires so you can say hey look i understand i'll do two now do two in july just to help out with the process i'm just curious you know uh, anything's possible so to be honest to honestly answer your question yes mm -hmm. yes we could do this incrementally and dr. Hefner and I when we first sat down several years ago and had our first meeting when he took over for dr. Cleveland we talked about that very thing doing this incrementally um, so but you know that that's I don't want to speak for him I don't want to speak for the Board of Education it would put them in a position where they would have to contract with some of these, maybe the same ones, maybe different ones, in order to fill some of those positions next year if we don't do you know, what we're requesting. If we don't do what we're requesting, those positions are going to be filled by somebody. We're not gonna have you know, schools over there without police officers there you know, protecting their safety. Um, so, yes, now, if we, if we chose not to do it the, the way that the request is written and we did it a different way, it would, you know, it would put some, um, some onus on um, the school board, Dr. Hefner and his staff to figure out who to contract with uh, to fill the remainder of those positions um, to adequately protect the schools. All right. Good discussion. As the liaison of the school board, I'll reiterate the same thing that he has told you. The last time Alex and I sat down, he basically told us that this was one of the most supportive things from a safety perspective that he wanted to pursue because he just feels like having that dedicated resource there that is not contracted just provides a different level of security for the school. Um, I feel like he's been very measured in taking a, you know, making sure their finances are where they need to be before they requested these things. So I feel like for us to Personally, I feel like for us to kind of waffle on whether we're going to do it now or later is, you know, if they've committed to it, we should step up into it as well. So I, I would make the motion for it. And, and I would uh, Sorry, make a motion. Sorry, that choice of words, my apologies. <laughs> did, you, did you make a motion? I did. Okay, then I would second that motion. Okay, so the, the motion is. I did not mean that. First of all, to uh, create we got the resolution for the <laughs> personnel board to create four new positions. Uh, Mike, do we need to do those in separate motions or can they all be one? Have to do a budget transfer also. Right. So does there need to be a, a, a motion to both create? Typically, the personnel board wants them separate. Okay. Okay. So you I, I haven't done those in the past. The city clerk's office always done those, but we can get it done. Right. Um, so you'd have to make one motion to create positions and be yeah, able to do the transfers. And the personnel budget. board. Yeah. You've seconded that. Yeah. All right. Any uh, any questions on that? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? That's five to zero. I'll well, support it, but you know, I just want to say that 
as we move forward in budget process, as we're going in September, yeah. these are the conversations that we're going to have to have because we just added four new positions, yeah. right? Yeah. And so while it's important and I'm supportive, at the same time, then we have to make hard choices elsewhere. Right. And that's the question. That's I was about to say the same thing. The we, we spend this money here. We've got to find this because it's not. We're not growing the pot. Right. And the federal funding stream has is drying right. up. And so my concern is that we're we're not ready to fully commit to all the things that we already said that we want to do. Yeah, we're gonna have to have some. Yeah. Just like yeah. We have to take it, take it from other parties. Please keep in mind though that, that these positions will be reimbursed. That, you know, eighty percent will be reimbursed by the school board. And I think probably and by the credit. <laughs> and I will say this so by, far. Next, by next Monday night, I think we can get from Tina and Justin. We can get yeah, some we need very specific details. numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when and when the reimbursement occurs. And yeah, yeah. We can get all that. We need all the logistics. Right? Okay, so right. maybe the topic of discussion with them is long term. We're looking to maybe they move to 100 percent. So that and there maybe worth having school. a discussion. Yeah. So that motion was to create, to add the four new positions. Right. All right, and then we got another one. resolution of where we're moving the money. Is that what the second resolution is? Well, you got to create the money where you need the money. So you can create the position. Yeah. And do you do you have money in any any of your line items to, to fund this? Some of this we're doing here on the next. Well, I'm I'm on the agenda for a budget amendment too. So yes. um, well, those, those, are tra those are transfers. So. Yeah, true. Um, I'm not wondering are, are you requesting two hundred fifty thousand and carry over fund balance? And or is it that's the way I see it. I, unless you you have some fund that we can take it from that's to right. fund to, to the transfer. No, it's not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not, not that kind of money. Okay. Some, no, federal, so it would be, some federal grant that we get for the next 25 years. <laughs> so it'd be, the motion would be to <coughs> fund a, a, up to $250,000 out of carryover fund balance with the anticipation that we would have reimbursement at the end of the fiscal year of 200000 right. So the net cost would be 50000 for this fiscal year. And then we're going to have to work through everything that the budget. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Move by Mr. Harden. Second by Councilor Alamo. Any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's five to zero. That passes. All right. Don't go anywhere, Chief. It's your next one. No. All right. I've sent this out as well. 040524 for consideration of budget amendments to transfer funds to overtime accounts. So there were five different items um, $90, that would need to go to overtime. Uh, money. So it would go 25,000 from the uh, 50300, which is water, 20,000 from fuels, which is uh, 30500, 25,000. Uh, from 31500 ammunition, 20,000 from 50445 wireless communications, and 5,000 from 31401 physical fitness, and all of those would be going into the overtime. Yes, sir. And trying to trying to get us uh, enough money in that account to, to make it through the rest of the budget year. Um, we started off the fiscal year. For some reason, I, I don't know why, um, but fifty something thousand dollars on about the second week of the fiscal year was was taken from our overtime account to pay down a bunch of police officers that were over the eighty hours on on time that they had earned the previous budget year. So, I'm not sure why they weren't paid during the last budget year, but that was a big hit to absorb right off the bat out of that line that line item for overtime. Uh, some of the other ways that we have run short is because of our staffing, particularly the staffing deficiencies that we have in the radio room and in the jail, which causes a situation where we have to have employees work two shifts instead of one a lot of times. And you can imagine that that's costly when they, you know, earn time and a half and they get paid overtime. So it's hit those, it's hit that line item, the, the overtime line item very hard, you know, uh, through this, this fiscal year thus far. Um, it's been very difficult to recruit uh, corrections officers and, and um, 
communication specialist or dispatchers. So we're continuing to have to work short in those areas, which is a, a big part of us um, going through a lot of our overtime budget already uh, this year. Uh, we've had some, you know, even some shortages in the uh, police officer position with regard to, um, you know, some vacancies and trying to fill those vacancies. Some some officers on military leave. In fact, one of my officers I think has been on military leave the whole fiscal year thus far. So those things create shortages to uh, injuries, <coughs> just things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and on a yearly basis that creates uh, a situation where people have to work overtime and then that, that budget gets eaten up pretty quickly. Chief Ross, uh, what, is a, what is your full staff number? 83 sworn and about 40 support personnel. Okay, and where are you? Uh, with those our sworn officers, I, I believe we are at, um, we just hired a couple of people we have two in the academy right now I believe we're at 82 so we have one vacancy right now that is frozen unfunded um, but we have numerous vacancies in the jail and in the radio room and then um, so that's really your support personnel is where you're, where you're yes. short. Yeah. all right so this is no new money this, these are all transfers that's correct so. um, I would make a motion to approve the uh, budget amendments as requested by the chief second that's 95,000 total. <coughs> move by uh, Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Qualme. All right, any, other, any questions on that? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Five to zero, that passes. I'll let them give up on that $5,000 worth of PT. Find it somewhere. Right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And with that, we're adjourned.